on a cutting edge. A cutting edge. Everyone say cutting edge. You know, it's got to be, you know, we're, we're on the cutting edge of things coming to an end and things beginning new. Everything's a cutting edge right now. There's so much excitement. Ah, I can just take off. I'll leave my sneakers though. Somebody might need them. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor, tell them this is your day of revelation. <laughs> yes, Matthew 15, verse 1. Then the scribes and the Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to see to Jesus, saying, Why do your disciples transgress your tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Now there's a difference between God and the elders. Hello? Because of your tradition. So he was kind of like rebuking their traditions of the elders. For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift from God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines of the commandments of men. When he had called to the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into a mouth, defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? Jesus smiled. <laughs> but he answered and said, every plant which my father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are the blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. Then Peter an answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. And they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. <laughs> we are in a time right now where, you know, there are what we call modern day Pharisees and Sadducees. <laughs> Hallelujah. We tend to be, in fact, we've got most of them that hold seats and positions of the political uh, modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees. And what they promote and uh, sustain is traditions of men. The traditions. And in these inherited traditions that they have, they promote and they protect. And they execute people who come against them. We are in a place right now where traditional endings are happening. I want to say traditional endings. In other words, the traditions of men. The ending of life's traditions of global overseers and their traditions of controlling and deceiving humanity is coming to its end. It is, we are here now. It's begun. All over the globe. You know, to do a global operation, only God can do. To bring down a whole antichrist regime, 
in all in all their locations in the globe in four hours is a pretty miracle thing. This is how God's going to do it. It's got to happen all at once. Now, there are already things beginning already. They're already arresting other presidents in other countries and so forth and whatever. Things are happening. People don't realize that we don't even have an IRS anymore. There is no IRS. It's just an a organization sustaining there is no more Federal Reserve. There's a lot of things that are not. There is no queen. We know she died, but she died years ago. They just finally made it known to America, known to the world. Because it was time for that to come to an end. You know, people don't realize that all of our taxes were going to Great Britain to pay off the debt. But the queen is no more. And she hasn't been for a while. That whole place has been dismantled. Everything is being dismantled. The powers of darkness are running for their lives. Instead of surrendering them to Christ. These traditional endings that we're going to see is in a global arena. It's already begun. We're going to see things this month that are going to begin to manifest and come to surface more and more and more. In Colossians chapter 2, they've shut down, and they've, they've allowed this. You know, God has allowed all of these things to happen so things can be exposed. Can you imagine if there's no more diesel fuel in the next week or two? How are trucks going to travel and bring food from one location to another? <laughs> We're going to enter a time when there's going to be a blackout. It could be multiple days. It could be 10 days. They've always talked about a 10-day blackout. Well, there'll be no internet. There'll be no nothing. It's already happened in Brazil. They told people, stay in your house. Don't stick your head out because you can get blown off. Why? Because they're taking down the Antichrist regime. And they're telling people to stay out of the streets, whatever. What we're seeing in other countries is going to happen here. One day I was praying and, and I said, Lord, I, I, I know you got a plan. I said, but, uh, you know, can I make a suggestion? You know, my brother Moses did it and everyone else. You know, I thought, what the heck? I am his kid, his son. And I said, Lord, I said, America's fat for the slaughter. They're, they're just too over, they're too over blessed here. I said, they don't see it. They're blinded. They're so caught, they're so caught up in themselves and in prosperity and money and, and holding on to their possessions and gaining more possessions and everything else. I said, they're missing the whole thing. They don't see it. They're not going to go out there and rise up like Brazil and other countries. They're not going to. I said, I'm, I'm going to ask you to please send out the military first. Then they'll rise up. Because they won't go out unless they feel protected. Because they're bound by fear. Fear of loss, fear of other things. So he said, well, pray. Ask about it. Pray that I send the military beforehand. And I began to. I don't think it was a coincidence that it was put in my spirit to even ask the question. I think it was put in my spirit to ask the question, to begin to pray for that. Amen? So we must pray that the military be released first. And I really believe it's going to get ready to happen. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak. Now this I say, lest any should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. Your what? That means we're to maintain a divine order from God. Putting things in divine order every single day. 
and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. In other words, you've got to be willing to make the shift when, it's re when God says so. You can't hold on to no traditions no more. But this is how we used to do it. Forget how what used to be done. Amen? Forget how taxes used to be collected. Forget about all of these things. All of this is going to change, man. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, big, big time. Big time, it's going to change. Is everybody okay? Verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, be awake, be vigilant. Amen? Lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to what? Tradition of men. What about the medical field? Don't they have a strange tradition? In fact, I went to the VA the other day because I'm a veteran and I get free medical. And they did my yearly checkup. And when I went in there to give, get my blood, to give my blood for a blood test, nobody said nothing to me about a mask. In fact, I was the only one in there who didn't have one. Well, when I went in there to meet the doctor, I got attacked by the security Gestapo and everyone. And I said, you need to wear a mask. I said, no, I don't. I said, you got to get out of here. I said, I have an appointment with the doctor. Well, then you need to wear a mask. I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, put the mask on. He said, this will be your last time in here. I said, okay. So I went and went to go see the doctor, and the nurse came in. And this guy, he was a male nurse, and he came in. Now, these are ex-military people. This guy's been, he's got nine sons, and he's been through all kinds of things, war, shot, and seen all of his friends die. And, and we started talking. He said, yeah, man, I, 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 won't even take, I won't take the vaccinations. I won't take the whatever. Because I'm not, I'm not a part of the military here. I'm a subcontractor. I said, oh. I'm retired. I said, oh. He says, yes, I don't believe in any of this stuff. I said, man, I feel sorry for you guys. You got to walk around here in this thing. And so then the doctor comes in with a two mask on and a, and a, and a plastic thing. I said, what the snap? She goes, where's your mask? I said, I ain't wearing no mask. I said, you got two and a face mask. What do I need one for? She couldn't say anything. I said, what are you afraid of? And she started mumbling. So you're not going to wear your mask? I said, no, because I was in a private room now. I said, I put it on my forehead, make it a hat or something like that. And she just ignored me. You know, so and maybe put it on my chin, you know, I don't, but I ain't wearing no mask. So it, it was hanging from my ear, and it finally fell off. So <laughs> and so she got done with me and whatever. And then there's another woman that came in wearing a mask. And she goes, I'm the one that releases you from here now. I said, I couldn't walk out myself. She goes, no, I got to check you out. That way you don't have to go to the front desk. I said, oh, all the Gestapo's at the front desk. She goes, yeah. I said, man, I feel sorry you got to wear this. She goes, I can't stand it, she says. And I can't wait till this is over with. I said, well, look at that. you got to do me something. I said, I ain't coming in here no more. She goes, okay, I don't blame you. She goes, we'll do a virtual. I said, that's better. She goes, and hopefully by then we won't have to wear these masks anymore. See, because this is all under Biden. The government... That's why so many people are, they don't have a mandate now for the military to take a vaccination because they're losing too many people. But they're still making them wear masks. I mean, I don't know how enforced it is, but the, the nurse told me there that at that facility in Claremont, it was, it was forced to wear a mask. I said, well, thank God I ain't going to wear one no more coming here because I ain't coming no more. But see, these are traditions now that, are, that have been created by man, not by God. Amen? And we've got to learn to cut loose. You know, I can't, it's still amazing to me that even places I go to, there's still people wearing masks all over the place. 
In other words, they haven't been unveiled. They don't know the truth yet then. So if they're wearing a mask, they don't know the truth. And that means there's a lot of them still. A lot. So it says, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. And this is what we're seeing coming to an end. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. Deception. Deception, deception through tra traditions of men. All of this deception for so many thousands of years. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, gird up your loins of your mind, other protect your thoughts. Be sober, be alert, and rest your hope fully on the plan of God or grace of God that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conform yourselves to the former losses in your ignorance. That word lust means desires. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on a father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in what? Fear or reverence to God. Knowing that you are not redeemed with the corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers or from men but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in his last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope is in him. In other words, protect your thoughts. Be alert. Maintain the fear of the Lord. Release yourself from worldly traditions of deception. Be willing to break loose of things. You know how many people are, uh, how can I say? And if the devil can't cure you with sin or accidents or whatever, he'll kill you with what you eat. People are still holding on to the things of tradition for what they eat. And it's harming them in multiple ways. Well, this is how, look at, I know so many people that wouldn't give up what they eat. And knew it was harmful to them and killing them and died. Because of the tradition. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 13. We are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification. That means separation coming out from among them by the Spirit, and belief in the truth and followers of the truth. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions. These are new traditions that God has released now. Which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. How many of you know that the Bible is a new tradition? It's a new addition and a new tradition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, may the Lord, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our, our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by his plan and by his grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. New traditions of the Spirit releasing us from the deceptive traditions of men. In Philippians 3, in verse 1. It finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of mutilation. For we are the circumcision. That means those who have a covenant who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in yourself. 
though I also might have confidence in the flesh or myself. If any else, anyone else thinks he has more confidence in the flesh than I, more so. Circumcised the eighth day, what a tradition. Of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Beverly, Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal pers persecuting the church, concerning righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Paul held the traditions of being upright according to the law, but he was a sinner. Hmm. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. In other words, he was willing to cut loose of all those traditions that he so protected, so upheld. But when Christ came into his life, he realized those traditions didn't mean nothing. It's relationship. Relationship. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ and the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul saw the old tradition of religion come to an end and a new beginning of freedom in Christ, willing to learn from his sufferings Willing to learn from what? His sufferings, not education. Not the carnal doctrines that they promote in colleges, indoctrinations. But deep fellowship with the cre Creator. You know, one of the things I said to this doctor, because while she was asking me about stuff, and have you and trying to promote the vaccine on me? I said, no, I don't need it. She goes, what about the flu shot? I said, no, 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 no. I take ivermectin. Ivermectin? How do you get ivermectin? I said, you can order it online. I said, it beats all of the M medical traditions. People that your doctors have been indoctrinated with. I smile. I'm not wearing a mask, but you're wearing two of them and a face mask. That's pretty ridiculous. Anyways, I found it quite interesting. <laughs> Again, we learn from our sufferings. Amen? The things that we go through, we learn. Well, you, look, you can't go to college and learn about the Spirit of God. You have to experience it. You can tell some, someone about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, about a demon leaving them. You can tell them all these things, but until they experience it, they ain't going to get it. But one of the things that happens is God pl places, establishes places where there's worship in God's presence, where you can begin to experience His presence, and you can begin to feel something squirming in you. You know? You look in the mirror and you got somebody blinking at you, you know. Yo. Who's in your mirror? I mean, you can see these shadows out of the corner of your eyes and you're like, whoa, I never saw that before. It's because God's presence is now light is beginning to expose darkness. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <laughs> First John chapter 2. That's why the Bible says, we will lay hands on the sick. We will cast out devils. You know, the world don't get that stuff. You and I in warfare should be driving out demons every single day. Out of our homes, our families, out of our children, out of everywhere. You know, there's something important that... When you, your faith, your faith is established by your worship, 
reading the word, encouraging, you know, what the, what the Spirit says, praying in tongues, everything's that increasing. Even your sufferings and experience will build your faith. See, when you, when you go through something and God intervenes, it's like, thank you, Master. Another, another list to the building of faith. Every day he's building your faith one way or another. Some, look at the, well, so you got an attack, all kinds of things are happening, and it just seems like there's no way out. And you're freaking out. Step out of the puddle of affliction, a freak out. Amen? And step into glory. Yes. Where his word says, all things are going to work to the good. See, you can't comprehend how he's going to do it, and you don't have to. Now, if you hold on to that, now you're going to see the end result. See, we don't, want, we don't have to see the result now. If you see the end result, it's going to come. See, when you're holding on to that in faith, now what the enemy likes to do is diminish your faith bit by bit by bit. Now, if you lose faith on that, it won't come to pass. Amen? Faith is limitless, but only if you maintain it. If you tie a rope to a dock... And you cut the rope, that the boat's going to, I mean, if you tie a rope to the dock with a boat, that rope is going to eventually go if it gets cut loose. Amen? But if it holds tight, so you and I must daily confess it. Thank you, Lord. You know, you ask and you thank afterwards. Man, thank you, Lord. I can see it. I'm, I see the end result of what's going to happen. And you hold on to the end result. That's called seeing it through. It's when you let go. That the enemy comes and dismantles it. Because that's his job. First John chapter 2, verse 3. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Now he's not talking about the Ten Commandments. He's talking about his commands. His new commandments he's given to us. But whoever keeps his word, hello, is his word commandments? Yeah. Truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also, also walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment I write to you, which is thing is true in him and in you because darkness is passing away come on say it darkness is passing away that's what's happening right now and the true light is already shining he who says he is in a light and hates his brother is in darkness until now he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going. Because the darkness has what? Blinded his eyes. Darkness is being, being thrown out, being overtaken by light and truth now. You know how I many pe more people know the truth than ever before? Globally. More people, and it's not about just knowing, it's knowing about there's evil. More people are realizing that there's such evil like there's never been. In other words, there's so much darkness, blindness, deception, wickedness. In Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as Jesus said on Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must be and must come to pass. But the end is what? Not yet. 
For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and, and earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows, but we're, about, we're at the end of the beginning of sorrows. Wars and rumors of wars. You know that there is a war. There is a tremendous war going on. We have a media war. Amen? We have a political war. We have an education war. We have a medical war. <laughs> How about a biochemical war? And drugs. Chemtrails. There, we got a religious war. There's an economic currency war. And, and it's all being exposed. And all their traditions of deception and control is going to come to an end. All of it. Hallelujah. In Revelation 17, in verse 1. The one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on what? Many waters. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And he carried her, he, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of, of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having her hand a, a gold cup full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of saints, with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman of the beast that carries her, which have seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life, who are not written in the book of life. Why? They will be deceived from the foundation of the world. See the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind who has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now, there's something important because the seven mountains are also known as seven hills. The woman who sits on the harlot, amen, is the Babylonian system that rules the world. They rule the, and then the seven hills, the church. They control them. The church, family, Financial, which you might say economic, amen. Government, media, education, and entertainment. They are controlled by money. And the harlot is falling. Everything is controlled by money. No money, no E.T., amen. No money, no nothing. That's why Jesus, one of, the, he do, one of the first things he did, he went into the, what, the temple, kicked over the money changers and exposed them because he knew the money, the money is what controls all these things. The money, the fall of the harlot will be destroyed. Because the, of the, the, how are you going to destroy the harlot unless you destroy its economic system? So you've got Russia and, and um, China owns the majority of the gold in the world. They're called the BRICS nations. Now many of them have joined the BRICS nations. Russia will not even sell any oil to anyone that will not pay anything that's backed by gold or silver. It's already happening. That's why the United States cannot get oil from Russia. Nobody can get oil from Russia or Saudi Arabia now. 
They've all joined what they call the BRICS nations. Everything, the BRICS nation is, everything is backed by gold and silver. Gold and silver, gold and silver. Why they're bringing down the economic system. The only way to destroy the harlot is to bring down their money supply. You gotta remember, who's the head of the harlots? The United States. They print money out with no backing of nothing. It's a note, it means nothing. So this is all happening right now. Remember, their intent was to sell out this country to the global world antichrist regime in every other country. But it's backfired on them. Now they're selling out everything. <clears throat> and it's backfiring on them because they have no money. Their money is useless in other countries to purchase oil and everything else. And it's slowly more and more Germany and everyone else is going to become BRICS nations. And it's going to destroy the harlot money. In fact, they're printing new money now. It's a rainbow color, the new currency that's getting ready to be released. And that currency will be backed by gold and silver. What's a rainbow represent? And don't tell me the demonic stuff. Covenant. Covenant. This money is going to be backed by gold and silver, a new covenant. Now, the money is going to be left in banks. I don't know. There's banks that are already closing. And so what's getting ready to happen is every bank, so they're, right now they're doing audits to all the banks. All the banks that do not have gold or silver to back their money will be shut down. And their loans will be removed. They can't lend out money. How does a bank make money? Lends out money. So there's a audit, there's a, they're all being audited right now. All the banks in the United States are being audited now. All over the world. If they're not backed by gold and silver, that bank will be shut down. Why? They're getting ready to release a new currency that's going to be backed by gold and silver. This is the only way to bring the harlot down. Does everybody get it? And then there'll be a reset. They're going to release new technology of healings and all... Machines that can bring, restore parts of the body and all kinds of stuff. Anyways, verse 10. There were also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, one is and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was is not and is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called what? They're called chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman who you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Again, gold and silver will be the back currency. We'll have a rainbow currency representing a new covenant because the traditions are being removed. The old currency, if you think about it, had a pyramid on it, which is a sign of satanic. Amen? It <laughs> had an all C and I which is associated with the false deities. This new currency will not be run by the demonic realm anymore. It will be run and owned by Christ Jesus. Is everybody okay? 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3.
So do you think it might be wise if you have all your money in the bank to pull it out? So if they revalue the money and it's only worth 50 cents compared to a dollar, see, you'll have to buy the new currency, but if it's not backed by gold, it's no good. Think about this. People's IRAs and all their stuff is going to be wiped out. So if you're depending on all those things to, for your survival, you better start cashing them out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Hello. <laughs> but I do have the wisdom from above. And if you want to hold on to things, listen, it, it's called equity. Amen? You want to have tangibility. And if you don't have it, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of you anyways. Because there's going to be a plenty to go around. Let me tell you. Hallelujah. There'll be plenty to go around. <laughs> yes! 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, not traditions, he's proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes, arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, and evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men in corrupt minds and destitute of truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourselves. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain, but we brought nothing in into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of every evil. For some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many, many sorrows. The love of money and the power of money is the root of all evil. That's what these political and all what you see globally, everything's about money. The harlot is about power and money. That's about everything to them. And Revelation 21. So as this begins and so forth, look, you don't, don't get freaked out by things that you hear the media say. Amen? Stay connected with the body of information. Stay connected. Because things are going to, I mean, they're going to start happening this month. Revelation 21 and verse 1. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. Also, there was no more sea. No more sea. Can you think, think about that? There's going to be no more oceans. This is when the new earth comes. And, 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 and the new Jerusalem and, and the city is going to be 1,500 miles square. That's big. We need a bigger earth to hold Jerusalem. Hallelujah. There's no more sea. There won't be no more need for water because water will come from the throne of God. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for, his, her, for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Now think about this, which is coming, which is the fulfillment. This is the fulfillment of Feast of Tabernacles. But everything is building up to this. So other things are going to be gradually happening. Amen? Amen? Everything's always a build-up. See, this is the end result. 
but there's a build-up to it. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the um, Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And I really believe that that place is going to be the Dead Sea. Just my opinion. It's going to burn. And then when you go up to worship God, wherever we are, when we all gather together, we will walk by there. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of the heavens from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone with jasper stone clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels and at the gates and, nine, and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the Israel. And three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold ring gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. And the city laid out a square, its lengths, and great breadths. He measured the city with her, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. And he measured its wall, 140 cubits, and according to... Da, 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 da. So I don't need to go into all of the construction of it. You can read that. Amen? We see a new time of a new order from above. Releasing the true reality realm and sending out invitations to all humanity willing to come out of the false reality. Really, the matrix. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to close at Daniel 12. Verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked and there stood two others on one side of the river and on the other side of the river. And the one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the rivers, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time and times and half times, that's three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, and all these things shall be finished. Although I heard I did not understand, then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall what? Understand. Remember that. None of the wicked shall understand what? What's going on? But the wise shall understand. Listen, there's only about 2% of the world that really understands about the economic transfers and everything else that's about to happen. That isn't many. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there should be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Here we are. We're in it. There's no turning back. Amen? 
The world will never be the same. It's gradually creeping more and more and more, but you're going to see chunks of it change more and more and more. God has called us for this time to be here at this time and alive. What an awesome, awesome call that is. And what an honor that is. To be able to carry the truth to people that don't know. Amen? Wherever we go, what you heard today is an impartation. It's a preparation. And it's a warning. Hold fast. Stand strong. Don't be deceived. Amen? And don't let the media or the news or the worldly news, man, come out of the worldly traditions. And let God establish the new way. Because he is Yahweh. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that this, what's been imparted in us today, be protected and sealed and brought to remembrance in due season for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.